Hey, it's Old Guy Coding again today, and uh, I wanted to try to do kind of a 3D carve with uh, ESTL cam on this board here. I'd like to make a little uh, little bowl, but I just realized here I have to put some carpet tape under there because it will cut out. Uh, I went out to, uh, I've got a subscription to uh, Vect-Easy uh, where you can download uh, vector images and, and use them. And uh, I found a heart shape out there that I liked. So I downloaded that uh, and then just uh, used it, uh, the STL as a heart shape. Um, then I copied it and made it smaller and uh, we can ignore this inner one here. That was an idea that, uh, that didn't f come to fruition. So in any case, I extruded both of these and uh, um, unfortunately, I don't have the video of me doing that, but I can show you what I came up with. Um, it's a, a little heart bowl, and uh, excuse me, get down, kitty. Uh, and I also made a hexagonal one that I haven't cut yet, but uh, uh, let's see if we can get the keyboards to respond here and everybody to work. So you can kind of see what I did here. Um, I just made an outer ridge. Uh, softened the outside. Um, I actually have a sharp cut there and kind of uh, filleted the inside here. So um, I just wanted to see how that would work out. So I took that and I exported it as an STL. So once you open ESTL cam and import the uh, SV, uh, STL file, my apologies, of course it's in uh, millimeters, and then uh, it's going to want to help you uh, machine this. And uh, we have two options here, um, free machining uh, and uh, block machining, primarily to do machining on a piece that works piece from two sides. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do one side here. So I selected free machining. And then uh, I did a roughing pattern of this, and we actually used a uh, um, quarter-inch ball and uh, even though you probably should rough with a, a mill end, it saved me from having to change bits over uh, to the finishing, which once again I used the quarter inch ball end. And by that time uh, I did the uh, uh, contour um, um, machining, waterline machi machining, I call it here. Um, and in the uh, final uh, mach finishing, uh, you want to have a nice small step over, you know. If you make it too small, it's going to take forever. So we'll go ahead and program and see how that comes out. And yes, because it's a ball end, it can't quite get down to the bottom edges on the uh, on the sides there. So yes, that's fine. And uh, I had increased the precision on this, I think so. All right, so you can see the runtime on this was uh, uh, two hours and thirty-four minutes. I did not cut it that finely. Um, let's go back and adjust that again, and let's go with um, the wrong way. Let's try ten percent and see if that light looks right. That was quite a bit quicker. So about an hour and thirteen minutes, and I think this is uh, how tight I ran on uh, some of those so you can kind of see what happens here so let's go ahead and take a look at that in action it's on my low rider so it's a little tough to see underneath the plate but uh, I'll, I'll do the best I can here now let me go ahead and straighten this guy out Good enough. Make sure it's all the way back against the end. Yeah, I gotta get this machine so it does all this stuff by itself. Yeah, there's an annoying. Try to turn the knob. Turn the knob.
least the board isn't too warped. So this may be a total bust, I don't know, we'll find out. The board is barely big enough to hold the item, so I'm going to start with the uh, bit at the hairy edge out here. It's touching the top surface. Is that amazing or what? That's pretty darn smooth too. Needs a little sanding, but that's amazing. Wow, very cool. It didn't quite cut as deep as it could have to give me some square edges down there. But let's face it, I am using a ball nose. So I really should be using a flat end to uh, rough that out. Look at that, it's coming up for me. Wow. So it's got some striping over here. So that appears to be some uh, uh, too deep of cuts on the rough cut or not deep enough cuts on the finishing cut. So what I did is I increased the allowance here um, and that seemed to solve the problem. I think I probably went up to a millimeter and a half and uh, that seemed to solve that on the subsequent runs. But I think we could easily sand that off. You can see in here that I used the contour setting for the final finish. You can see how the uh, lines follow the contour around. And it's a little rough on the bottom there, but I intended to route that over anyway. So I took that rough edge off around the uh, bottom here. I took that off quite nicely. A little bit of burning right there and a little bit of burning in here, but that's okay. It's oak. That's what it does. So now I think we're just to, uh, down to doing some sanding. Well, here they are. All finished up. Uh, this one I did not sand far enough down, of course, to get those uh, ridges from the first pass on. I didn't catch those that I uh, hadn't sanded those good enough, but these two came out pretty good. On some of these you can still see some of the uh, machining paths. But anyway, I think they turned out quite nice just the way they are. So I got some of these little uh, rubber bumpers. Very spots. The 
the boards are a little bit a little bit warped they're not quite um, you know 100% flat but let's see what uh, let's see what 3 feels like in there yeah that makes it stick really nice where these slide around pretty easy yeah yeah I think that works I think 3 works and we'll go to my wife's store maybe this one too even though it's got a little defect in it see if somebody will buy them I think they're pretty cool. So, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll do a video about something else here soon. Bye.